Pardon me. That's going ashore. All ashore, that's going ashore. I've really got to go, man. I'll wind up in Alaska. Is that bad? Oh, now, don't rush off, Laura. I'm still trying to get acquainted. But the steward wants me to get off the ship. I'll be gone for months. Maybe out of sight will be out of mind. You don't know me very well. You know you're going to make me a stowaway. Well, why not? You might just as well come up with me now as later. We're getting married, you know. Well, you seem awfully sure of yourself. I had a hunch you were the girl for me the minute I walked into that wholesale house and tried to shake them down for a loan. There you were, sitting at a desk, pretty as a picture and tough as a walrus. No resemblance, I hope. Not the slightest. And you got the loan, didn't you? Thanks to you. And don't you worry. I'll deliver all the salmon in Alaska. I'm sure you will. Gangplank going up. All visitors ashore. Please. Please, Matt. OK. Don't come to the gangplank with me. I'd rather you didn't. And I said you were tough as a walrus. How's the kid, brother? Okay. Hey, you didn't have to get all dialed up like this just to meet me. Oh, I'm not just meeting you. I'm getting out of here, taking the steamer back just as soon as you pay me off. Now, take it easy, kid. You were due back two weeks ago. I see the usual thing kept you. Another Dane. Is that all you're sore about? It's enough, isn't it? Oh, it took me a little time to finance some fishing gear I bought. Well, you see the salmon traps and the nets. Oh, that's great. Fishing gear with the season almost over. What's the idea? I got an angle. You always have. I'll bet it's as crooked as your other ones. Now, wait a minute, Bill. You wait a minute. I'm not listening to any more of your schemes. I've spent the last three years with you, and I want a vacation. I want to go to Seattle and have some fun myself. OK. You can go to Seattle. But why don't you wait till the fishing season's over? It's only another week. Yeah, another week. Another week. That's how I spent the last three years here, always waiting for another week. Yeah, but look, Bill, the ship's going on to Nome anyway. It won't be back for 10 days. All right. I'll wait right here in Sitka. OK. Wait in Sitka. You can wait for your share of the profits, too. You mean you won't pay me my own money? Right. Feel better now? Come on. Let's go to work. Throw the gear away. I want to talk to Pete. OK. Well, I brought you luck. Glad to see you, Pete. It's good to be back. Never did care much for big cities. Every place you go, you get gypped. I got a proposition for you, Pete. 
I can use all the salmon you buy from the Indians after the season closes. Why? Well, to tell you the truth, I made a little deal down in Seattle. Promised to supply an extra 5,000 cases to a wholesale house. But with the salmon run we're having, I don't think I'll be able to make it. Fish you get from us Indians won't help. You know, we can only catch a few at a time. Sure, I know all about your treaty with the government. But I think we can get around it. I brought back some big traps and nets. Suppose you give them to your Indians and we'll share the profits. You know better than ask me to do that, Matt. Government regulations only allow us to fish with a harpoon. Maybe a small net once in a while. Commercial fishing's out. You could fix this place up fine with a little more money, Pete. I like it the way it is. I didn't know you were back. I just got in this minute, Jane. I was looking for you. Oh, Matt, how I've missed you. But I'm never gonna let you go again. Remember what you promised? Soon as the fishing season closes, we'll get married. Well, it's all right with me. Want to spend a nice, quiet honeymoon in jail. In jail? Yeah. You know how the salmon run's been this year. I made a deal for salmon I can't deliver. But they can't put you in jail for that. Oh, yes, they can. I took a large cash advance. They may call it obtaining money under false pretenses. How much salmon do you need, Matt? More than I can catch the rest of this season. Maybe you won't stop catching them. You know, Jane, I'm beginning to feel I made a mistake staying away so long. You tiny, got a bad arm? Oh, I got a bad head this morning. Yeah, you better lay off that head, Tiny. Look at those babies jump. Pretty as a ballet and as big as whales. What are you so excited about? You're supposed to be in Seattle. Uh -huh, that's where I'm gonna be in one week from today. That's where I'm gonna be, too. <laughs> it's a date. I'll meet you at the Diamond Dance, third block from the right. Come on, come on, you guys, haul her up. Remember that cannery cruise right on her tail. right away and have Solly look at that ham. He mashed his hand. One of my best men, too. Sure makes me sure to help. It's tough with the salmon running the way they are. Yeah. Say, why can't we close the cannery down and use the crew? Might just as well take advantage of the run. Boy, I'd sure like to get this day over with. Awful anxious to get out, aren't you? You can say that again. And I'm not the only one who's anxious. My whole crew can't wait till tomorrow. That back pay sure burns a hole in your pocket, don't it? It sure does, and it's a nice feeling, too. And while we're on the subject, Matt, I want you to get this straight. I'm packing and leaving for Sitka tomorrow morning. And this time, there won't be any cleanup work, errands, or any of your other excuses. OK, we're only wasting time talking about it. Suppose Moose and I give you a hand at the trap. OK, hop in.
That ought to hold him. How is he, Solly? Sure looks like he's busted a couple of ribs. Might be bleeding inside, too. You'd better send a Setka for a doctor. Why? Ain't I good enough for you? I've been taking care of busted heads and ribs since before you was born. Many's the time I've sawed a leg off on a mess table with my clasp knife. In a raging gale, too. Sure, sure, Solly. You know your stuff. But if Matt's bleeding internally, he needs an MD. Matt's tougher than a sea lion. He'll be all right. Just give him an aspirin and a dose of salt. That's all them MDs ever prescribe. How do you feel now, Matt? Pretty bad. But don't you worry about me. You better get back to the crew. I hate to leave you alone, Matt. I'll, I'll send one of the Indians in. No, never mind. I'll be all right. You're not running off to Seattle now, are you, Bill? No, I'll wait until the doctor arrives and see what he says. Thanks. You'll have to take over the cannery, too. Okay, I'll get over there as soon as the season closes tonight. The fishing season isn't closing for us this year. What do you mean? I made a deal with Pete to buy all the salmon as Indians catch. But you couldn't feed a dog team on that. Maybe yes, maybe no. Let's see how it works out. Anyway, don't say anything about it. Why not? I don't want the government fish patrol asking questions. The Indians are allowed to fish for all the salmon they want, out of season. I know. They're gonna do an awful lot of fishing. Is that what you had in mind when I met you at the dock? What's wrong with it? If there wasn't something wrong with it, you wouldn't want to keep it a secret. Let's not argue about it now. How is he? How's Matt? I don't know. Matt. Are you hurt bad? No. But that's what I want him to think. Gives me a good alibi and keeps Bill in line. I got a couple of sore ribs. That isn't going to stop us from going ahead with our deal. You're pretty smart. And you're pretty good looking. That's illegal. So what? We've only got a couple of hours left. Douse that light, Moose. We're behind on our quota, you know. Anyway, we're not the only ones fishing with a light. What do you call them, fireflies? You know as well as I do, Indians are allowed to fish with a light. Now douse it. How'd we do? We caught a lot of fish, but we didn't make the quota. We'll make the quota. Matt tell you what we're planning on? I'm not interested. I told Matt I'd stay up here until they count up the catch. And I'm heading south. I'm packing the first thing in the morning myself. Yeah, me too. I'm going to Seattle and get me the best room in the best hotel. Better go to a Turkish bath first and get your barnacle scraped off. And then I'm going to get me a new outfit, a real fancy meal, Go looking for trouble. What are you trying to start? Mutiny? We need these men for the cannery. They pull out, we'll never get another crew. Season's over. I told you I'm not interested. Repeat. 
reports are coming in to know that a new gold field is opening up north of Fairbanks on Birch Creek, which is one of the subsidiaries. What's the matter? Your brother's the matter. He's pulling out as soon as the salmon are packed. Oh. Maybe it'd be better if he does. He's not going to stand for what we've got in mind. Okay, let him go. But if he goes, the whole crew goes, and you'll have to shut down the cannery. How do you know that? Those guys have got a lot of dough piled up. And after your brother got through shooting off his mouth, all they've got on their mind is Seattle. You figure if Bill stays, they will too? Sure, they all think he's a big shot. He can talk them into anything. And we gotta keep him here. That's a neat trick if you can do it, but you can't do it with talk. Not this time. You can't tie him to the cannery. No. But a good-looking girl might make him change his mind. They ain't a good-looking dame this side of Seattle. You're right there, Moose. But I got a gal in Seattle who's got a lot of charm. I want you to send this wire to Seattle right away. Come in, Helen, please. Yes, Miss Reed? I have to fly to Sitka, Helen. It's urgent. Get me out on the first plane you can, will you? Right away. And I want to send a wire to Matt Garraway, Chilcat, Alaska. darn thing the matter with you, Matt, except a couple of bruised ribs. You can get out of bed right now instead of lying there like an old lady with the palsy. Just wanted to make sure, Doc. Uh, dragging me up here all the way from Sitka. Why, I've got patients needing me there who are really sick. The Doc got out of bed the wrong side today. A fellow like you. Folding up like a, like a fainting woman. All you need is an aspirin and a dose of salt. <laughs> Get him on his way before Bill sees him. Just left. What's he say about Matt? Matt will tell you himself. He wants to see you. Hi, Junior. Hi. What did the doctor say? Looks like a long pull, Bill. He says I'm busted up inside. Oh, that's tough. But it's okay. You can still go to Seattle. I got a nurse coming up to take care of me. Tell me, nurse, who's Laura? The girl I met in Seattle. What's she coming up here for? Prepare yourself for a shock, Bill. I'm getting married. Well, aren't you going to congratulate me? Aren't you forgetting something, Matt? What? Jane. She's not going to like your marrying someone else. Jane. She'd have more sense than to think I'd marry a half-breed. Anyway, what can she do about it? Nothing much. Just kill you. You let me worry about that. I want you to get down to Sitka and meet Laura. Me? What about the cannery? Most can handle it. You won't be gone forever. Don't you want to meet your future sister-in-law? You won't mind. She's not bad. Not half bad. Nice of you boys to drop in. Where have you been? He had to get that tape off so he could get his clothes on. The doc had me wrapped up like an Egyptian mummy. I think he was getting even. Who's in the boat? Joe. Joe Taku, you know him. He loves me too, remember? Poor guy. 
Well, it really is blind. You got all the nets in the boat? Yes, everything's ready. Let's go. I think I hear a motor. She's right. It's the police patrol. You know what to do. Aren't you, Jane? We thought we could get a better haul using a light with these harpoons. Isn't that uh, Matt Garraway's boat? Yes. We have his permission. I'm not questioning that. I can't say I'm crazy about you using a light. That's my privilege, Inspector. Maybe not. We better work fast. Matt, aren't you afraid they'll see this net in the morning? Not this net. It's got special weights on it to keep the floats under the surface. You think of everything. Sure. When I can keep my mind on my work. Excuse me, are you Laura Reed? Oh, yes. Anything wrong? No, no, I just thought that... Well, go ahead, say it. You thought I'd be an old walrus. Oh, no. <laughs> you must be the baby brother Matt told me about. Yeah. Baby brother? Let me take your bag. Thank you. How is Matt? Oh, still in bed, but he'll live. He was pretty badly hurt, wasn't he? I guess so. Uh, the car's down here. Matt certainly didn't exaggerate. This is beautiful country. Yeah. Summers aren't bad. But once you get snowbound, you lose your enthusiasm. Now I know what's the matter with you, Bill. What? You're snowbound. We better not wake him. I'll come back later. Laura. Hello, Matt, darling. Are you all right? I am now, baby. Anybody who wouldn't get well with you for a nurse doesn't deserve to live. I'll see you two later. Now, wait a minute, Bill. Don't rush off. You've got to help Laura get settled. 
Oh, that's all right. I'll manage. Well, you're not a big executive up here, you know. You don't know your way around. Give us a chance to be big shots. All right. I had the natives clean up that cabin near the cannery for Laura. You better hire one of the Indian women to take care of the place for her. Okay, I'll have her things moved in right away. I'll be back. What's the matter with him? He's certainly been acting strangely for a brother. Oh, he feels abused. He wants to go to Seattle and Kent because I need him here at the cannery. Isn't that a little childish? Sure. All he wants is fun. No sense of responsibility. If I were on my feet, I'd let him go in a minute. But I can't run the cannery from a bit. It's the most selfish attitude I've ever heard. I have a good mind to tell him so, too. I don't think it'd make any difference to him. We'll see. Now, let me fix you some breakfast. Did you get any sleep? Well, frankly, no. I was awake most of the night. Well, you can take a nap after I get you something to eat. Every bit of it. It'll make you feel much better. Hey, Bill. Did uh, did Matt's uh, girlfriend show up yet? She's with Matt now. What's she like? Hot stuff, huh? You won't understand her, Moose. She's a lady, which is something I can't understand. Your bags are in the cabin, Miss Reed. Oh, thank you. Laura, this is Moose McGovern, my foreman. How do you do? Hi, Laura. I'm sure. Why don't you run along and get yourself settled? Bill will show you your new home. All right. Goodbye, dear. Goodbye. I'll be sure he eats every bit of that. Yeah, you bet. Thank you, Mr. McGovern. Yeah, likewise. Lock the door. I ain't gonna like that. We got a big night ahead of us hauling in those fish. If I ate that blue plate special she fixed, I'd really be sick. Oh, sit down, please. I'll join you. Is everything satisfactory? Oh, fine, thanks. You know, I expected something pretty grim, but this looks nice and comfortable. I'm going to love it. You'll find that old squaw quite reliable. She'll do the cleaning and the cooking. Uh, now, if you'll excuse oh, me. Oh, just a minute, Bill. I'd like to talk to you. Matt tells me you're very anxious to go to uh, Seattle. Anxious is just putting it mildly. Don't you think that's a little cold-blooded with him sick in bed? I told Matt I'd stay here till he got on his feet. Is that all you wanted to know? Look, Bill. I don't want to start out like a typical in-law, but well, you seem to think you're doing Matt a big favor by staying. You owe it to him. Doesn't the fact that he's your brother mean anything to you? Did Matt tell you to use this line on me? He had nothing to do with it. And I hope you won't mind if I suggest you mind your own business. You surprised me? I wasn't expecting. Now, take it easy, baby. What's the idea? The idea is I'm going to kill you, Matt. Don't be a fool. Put that knife down. I've already been a fool, Matt. Pete, he's been talking to you. You know he hates me. You lied to me. Pete told me. That girl came up here to marry you. Well, you've got it all mixed up, baby. She's Bill's girl. They're gonna be married. 
Bill? Sure. Why do you suppose he was so anxious to get to Seattle? She got tired of waiting for him and came up after him. She's only been nursing me. Like any sister-in-law. Vitamins up to hit. I guess I am a fool, Matt. Oh, forget it. You're only playing games. I should have listened to my brother, darling. From now on, you just listen to me. more halls like this, we'll make it. We'd better. Can't pull much more of this. Bill's getting nosy. Pretty nice haul, eh? Do you mean to say the Indians caught all those fish? Big salmon run down the channel. We've been using a few small nets. Small nets? Uh-huh. Okay, I'll have the men unload them. Nice and hot. Keep it. What we need is lots of sleep and not quite so much java. This work in two shifts is murder. I wonder where all the salmon's coming from. You're uh, kind of new around here, ain't you, Bob? I don't care where it's coming from. And I don't care how much pay I'm getting. I'm quitting. If my blonde in Seattle's got a new boyfriend, I'll come back here and punch Matt right in the nose. There. Toast, poached eggs, and prunes. Can I even have a cup of coffee? No. Don't start that potting routine again. Come in. Good morning. Good morning, Bill. Just in time for breakfast. Hey, you can have mine. Oh, no, you don't. You look a little red-eyed this morning, Bill. What's the matter? Your conscience keep you awake? I'll bet yours didn't. We were canning all night. Spoon. That load of fish you bought from the Indians, remember? Was it a good haul? Too good. What's wrong with that? There's plenty wrong with that. And the men, too. They're getting restless. They're making good money, aren't they? It's not the money, Matt. They're tired. They're always griping. Forget it. You can handle them. I got the spoon near. How about showing Laura the town? I don't think she'd be interested. Go after him, Laura. No sense in you two fighting. Oh, all right. You two fight enough for one family. I'll see if I can make friends. Well? Well? I, uh... Well, I'm sorry I lost my temper. Well? Maybe I lost a little temper, too. Then we can be friends? Sure, Laura. That's the way you want it. I want it very much. I was going home to get some shut-eye, but that can wait. Would you really like to see the local sights? That is, outside of me. <laughs> Are you a local sight? If I stay here any longer, I'm going to take root. I'll show you the trading post first. It's the Washington Monument in this community. Oh, really? <laughs>
Well, you did it again. This is Miss Reed. Laura, this is Pete Coster. Hello, Mr. Coster. Welcome to Chilcot. Thank you. Pete's the native chief of the Chilcot Indians. Oh, really? Bill, you ought to show Miss Reed some of our totem poles. I will. Excuse me? Certainly. Who's a pretty girl? As Jane Coster, Pete's sister. I'll show you our totem poles. Anything like etchings? Yeah, Alaskan etchings. <laughs> See? She belongs to Bill, not Matt. There's one of our very best totem poles. Please notice, it not only has a high man, it has a low man, too. Well, fully equipped. Very impressive. Mm -hmm. Yes, and the Indians take their totem poles very seriously. Every summer before the fishing season starts, they dance and pray around them, invoking the gods to send them plenty of salmon. And the gods never fail them. You know, it's a strange thing about salmon. They're one of life's great mysteries. They're born miles from the sea on the shallow bottom of a river. They fight their way to sea and disappear completely for three or four years. Then in the early summer, when they've completed their life cycle, they swarm back toward the rivers in millions. That's when we're permitted to catch them, with nets, with fishing traps, with hook and line. But a lot of the salmon get away, which is a good thing, or there wouldn't be any salmon eggs. They put up a terrific battle on their way to spawn. They don't even stop to eat or rest. Finally, they reach the very same river bottom where they themselves were spawned. They dig a hole in the sand with their tails. Then they spawn and die. Do I sound like a professor? <sighs> sound like a man who knows what he's talking about. You're really sold on all this, aren't you, Bill? I suppose I am but you can get too much of a good thing. And now that the season's closed, I... Apparently isn't closed for some people. Indians. The fishing season's never closed for them. That's how Matt's getting all his fish now, isn't it? So he says. Don't you believe him? Sometimes he's very hard to believe. You know, I just don't understand your attitude toward him, Bill. The way you talk about him, I... Anyone would think you were enemies instead of brothers. Could be, except that he never lets me forget that I'm his brother. But I don't understand that... I guess I should mind my own business. Well, I think I'll get some of that shut-eye I've been talking about. I'll show you back to your cabin. Oh, don't bother. I'm in no hurry. I'll continue this cook's tour along. Thanks for the lecture. You're a swell audience. No use kidding ourselves, Matt. We still haven't made the quota, and we can't keep that cannery crew working much longer. Can Bill keep him quiet? Maybe so, but he's not trying very hard. Okay. Let's make one last big haul. Suppose we tow some of the salmon traps down to the channel tonight. Well, it's too dangerous, Matt. I know, but the way the fish are running, those traps will be filled by dawn, and then we can tow them back. Tell Jane and Stooge to stand by. I'll meet you at the cannery slip right after midnight. Drop the last trap here. Are you okay, Joe? Okay. We're setting the trap here. Drop anchor and stand by to be picked up.
back and get Joe. Okay. Listen, motor. Hey, they're bound to find us with that light. Get Joe quick and we'll get out of here. We can't stop to get Joe. We can't leave him on the trap. He'll get picked up. Those government inspectors will make him talk. Joe won't talk. You didn't have to do that. Give me the wheel. I know this inlet. They'll never find us. Who is it? Move. Morning, Matt. Just getting myself some real grub before Laura gets here. I'll use some of that myself. Pour it. I think we're going to have company. Inspector Winters is down the village. He just brought Joe's body into the natives. Let's get rid of the gun. Yeah, it's at the bottom of the channel. That hot-headed dame, she's really got us in a jam. Winters can't prove anything. We don't get panicky. I better get into bed. You open it. Oh, come in, Inspector. Come in. Morning, Moose. Morning. How are you feeling today? Fine. I'll be on my feet in no time. Yeah. It's kind of confining, staying in bed. You mind if I look over your guns, Matt? Go right ahead, Inspector. All I've got is a shotgun. To me, you used to have a rifle. Yeah, but I sold it. Didn't have much use for it. I guess you heard about the accident that happened to Joe Taku. Moose was just telling me. Funny thing, we found one of your new floating traps down by the channel. You did? Poachers must have got a hold of it. That's what I figured. Well, I won't interrupt you boys at your breakfast. See you later. Quite a backlog of salmon. Yeah. You're the only cannery working this late. Yeah, Matt made a deal with the Indians. I figured as much. Too bad you couldn't have gotten a hold of that trap that we towed away last night. It was full of salmon. Yeah? But they're all back in the channel now. Mm. Any idea who shot Joe? No. But I will have, as soon as I know who he's working for. By the way, we'll have to hold on to that trap for evidence. You don't mind? No, hold it as long as you want. Matt won't need it until next July. I'm sure he won't. Well, much obliged. I'll see you later.
thought women weren't allowed to watch this ceremony. The Indians must have thought a lot of Joe to put on this death ritual for him. They did. He was in love with you, wasn't he? Yes. He was. Too bad. Nice boy, Joe. Any idea why he was on that trap when he was shot? No. Not very talkative today, are you, Jane? You know, it's a rather strange coincidence that you and Joe should have been on Matt's launch one night, and he should have been shot on Matt's fishing trap the other night. Isn't it? I told you Matt gave us his permission. I don't know anything about the salmon trap. Too bad. I was hoping you'd give me a lead. Well, see you around. You've made a fool out of me long enough. I don't think you're on the level about the salmon, and I don't think you're as sick as... Well, Damon and Pythias. What's wrong now? Matt's all wrong. And before he's through, he'll pull us down with him. Bill's hot-headed as usual. Jumping to conclusions. What conclusions? The inspector from the fish patrol was around checking on the death of that Indian. Bill accuses me of fish piracy and murder. Murder? His own brother? Oh, this is ridiculous. Bill, it's perfectly all right with me if you refuse to grow up. But accusing your own brother of murder is fantastic. Why don't you leave him alone? I intend to. All alone. I'm leaving right away. I'm not surprised. That's typical of you. And just when he needs your help. Maybe it's just as well, considering the help you've been. Matt can help himself. He's not as sick as he acts, and if you weren't so blind, you'd see it. If you want the truth, I'll tell you. Matt's taken advance money from a wholesale house in Seattle to deliver salmon. I know all about that. I arranged the loan. Well, good for you. That makes you an accessory. But what you don't know is he can't deliver that salmon legally. He tried to bribe Pete to make his Indians use illegal traps. Pete wouldn't go for that. Now I'll bet my life Matt and Moose have somebody else doing it. I don't believe it. You're just running Matt down because he's smarter than you. I'm more of a gentleman, too, I might add. All right, if you're so sold on him, why don't you marry him right away? What are you waiting for? Set the date. He's all yours and you can have him. Hello, Laura. This is Jane Costa, Laura Reed. Oh, yes, I met your brother the other day. I just talked to Bill and he wants to leave. I wish you'd set our wedding date right away. But don't let him worry you, Laura. He always was bullheaded. Sure, I'll set the wedding date. And I'll make Bill keep his promise, too. I wish you a lot of happiness. Well, thank you. I've got to leave now. Goodbye. Goodbye. It's very nice, isn't she? Yeah, good kid. She just dropped by to see how I was. Matt. I think you ought to forget about making Bill keep his promise. He's determined to leave, and I don't think you ought to stop him. Why not? Oh, because of what he thinks and has been saying about you. Well, I know they're not true, but it's liable to get you into trouble. What things? Just what he told you. That you've taken money for salmon you can't deliver, and that you're involved in fish piracy and murder. Let him go. I'll get out of bed and run the cannery myself. But you shouldn't, Matt, not yet. I haven't any choice. Anyway, I'm getting better quicker than you think. What's the matter, baby? Nothing. I... I guess I'm just upset about it, Bill. Go 
Gosh, you certainly are lucky, aren't you? Hello. How old is he? Eight years old today. Today? Well, then we'll have to do something about a birthday party. Hello, Jane. Uh, may I have this cake and some birthday candles? The little boy, he's eight years old today. That's <laughs> nice of you. Thank you. There. <laughs> How much is that? Nothing. Oh, but please, I Forget Aunt it, Miss Reed. Well, that, that's very sweet of you. Thanks, Emily. Now, close your eyes, make a wish, take a deep breath, and blow. Blow hard. That's right. Now your wish will come true. Go ahead. Eat it. I thought I'd seen practically everything. I guess you're happy to be getting married soon. Oh, why, yes. Yes, I am. Don't worry about Bill. He's young and he fights with Matt sometimes. But he's a good boy. I won't have a chance to do much worrying about him. He's going away. He won't even be here for the wedding. What are you talking about? How can you marry him if he won't be here for the wedding? Marry Bill? It isn't Bill I'm marrying, it's Matt. Matt? Why, yes. Well, you must have the brothers mixed up. Yes. Yes, I did. The sooner he gets out of here, the better I'll like it. You take over the cannery. Sure. You know I can't keep that crew on the job. They won't listen to me. Well, make them listen. And what's more, we're going to have for one more haul. Are you crazy after what happened? There'll be patrol boats all over that channel. We'll use the nets like we did the first time. We've got to do it, most of we'll lose the whole works. We still haven't got enough cases to ship, and that wholesale house will be clamping down on us any minute. Well, if the fish patrol catches us, we'll lose more than the cannery. Well, you've got to take the chance. We'll use Jane as a cover-up again. Tell her we're going out tonight. Me dizzy, Bill. You're worse than a waltz in mouse. Come on over and have a cup of java. No, thanks, Solly. I guess you think I'm a heel. Do you care what I think? You know that I do. Have you and Matt set the date? Yes. Early next week. You could send us a wedding present from Seattle. by carry a pigeon. Regardless of my actions, Laura, all the luck in the world to you both. Thanks. You know, I kind of wish it had been an old walrus I had met at the plane that day. Why? Well, then I wouldn't be feeling the way I feel now. Bill. It's a funny thing. I, for the past three years, I've been beefing about getting to Seattle. Now that I'm going, I've lost interest. Why? You'll have lots of fun. There'll be cafes and people to amuse you. Girls. And you won't be there. I'll be leaving early in the morning, so goodbye. Let's not say goodbye. Maybe you'll come and see us next year. Maybe.
girl. I need those to pull the patrol. Here's the camera. Okay, we're all set. Let's go. You're pretty spry for an invalid. All right, so you caught me. What difference does it make to you? You're clearing out anyway. It might not make any difference to me, but it'll sure make a difference to Laura. Shut up. So you were too sick to get out of bed. Making a fool out of me and all the men. Get out of here. I haven't got time to listen to you. Worse than that, you made a sap out of Laura, bringing her up here and telling her you're going to marry her. <laughs> between Bill and me. Oh, my ribs. Maybe all right, let's go. Right here. I don't see how you got her all snarled up like that. I'll have to go over the side. I forgot to tell you something, Matt. Forgot to tell you you made a fool out of me, too. Oh, wait a minute, Jane. Bill was lying. You were lying. But you'll never marry that woman. What happened? Talk to Jane alone. I won't help you. I'm not sorry. After all, I did double-cross you. Oh, man. I love you. We're a couple of bad ones, Jane. Probably meant for each other. But it's too late now. Maybe I wasn't pretty smart. But you're still pretty good-looking.
Matt said that he shot Joe Taku. Told me where to find the gun. He didn't do it, did he? I saw it not. The police are waiting out the boat landing with Moose. Come on. Just drop by to say goodbye, Pete. You'll come back next year? Yes, we'll be back. Swell. I think maybe Matt would have liked it that way. Pleasant voyage to you. Goodbye, Pete. Goodbye. So long, Pete. Here. 